November 2019, Playboy Cardi had just announced in this Instagram post that he was starting a label under the name Opium. Weeks prior to that, his unreleased music revealed he had actually already been hinting at the name for a while, right in front of our faces. This would ultimately become the start of something big and help introduce the world to its next potential superstar, Destroy Lonely. I want to make a change in the world. In five years, I'll be... My campaign, whatever I'm trying to run is gonna be started. It's gonna be going. It's gonna be my turn. Bobby Sandamani III was born July 30th, 2001 in Atlanta, Georgia. You could say from the start he was born to be an artist as he always had a creative outlook in pretty much everything he did. Not much is known about his mom, but we do know that his father is a rapper known as I-20. A name that may not ring a bell at first thought, but you've almost certainly heard him rap on this iconic song. Having a dad who is an artist himself most definitely played an inspiring role in his childhood, but that's not to say he had a free pass to success by any means. But this is partially why music has always been the center of his life as long as he can remember, with his dad taking him to studios and music video sets as a child. When I was younger, I got to see like a lot of the shit that my pops was doing. Mm -hmm. I'm in like some of his music videos like as a baby, so I was yeah. like... When speaking about his younger years, he says he spent a lot of time alone, or learning how to play new instruments like the piano, trumpet, and violin. Eventually, he convinced his grandma to homeschool him in the sixth grade, but this only made him feel more alone as he wasn't socializing or making a lot of friends, ultimately giving him the feeling that he didn't fit in. This carried on into his teenage years when he finally decided to return to high school and give it another shot. Although he was starting to enjoy other activities like skateboarding, he always found himself just wanting to pursue music. It was his passion and nothing else seemed to bring him that sense of happiness, with the exception of drugs. During this time, he started to experiment with things such as Xanax and quickly realized he enjoyed them too much, and that's never a good thing. If he continued down this path, it would only end in self-destruction. In turn, this would actually become the thought process he had when creating his moniker. Destroy represented his teenage years of self-sabotage, and Lonely, his adolescent years in isolation. In school, I was going through some shit. What were you doing? Drugs. So like... That shit had me feeling crazy. I felt like if I kept doing that, I would destroy myself. Then before that, I spent a bunch of time by myself, so I just called myself lonely. I After years of experimenting at age 14, he decided to go all in creating music. Quoting, I made my first song on my computer on some bullshit, and I just kept at it. Fortunate for him, his high school just so happened to build a full recording studio for students. From then on, most of his time was spent skipping classes to go record, to which his teacher led him after seeing how passionate he was about it. Here, he learned how to record and mix his own music, and even wrote some of his first songs. Sometime in 2016, his SoundCloud account was created under the username Tundra Boy Lonely. Songs like No Face No Case and No Smoke showcased his earliest work in his first ever music video, none of which would gain more than 100 plays at the time. Going back and taking a listen, you can hear the bad mix and low quality microphone being used, which is inspiring to see how far his music has evolved. At this point in time, it was all about experimenting until he found the sound that best suited him. He dropped his first project titled Destroy on August 9, 2017. This project showed a much darker and underground sound as he was starting to find his lane of music. While this is happening, he started attending underground shows in Atlanta and making new friends at school. Two people that he met that would become important were his friends Texaco and Nisus. He met Nisus at an event and almost a year later, he just so happened to move across the street from him. Looking back, he says this was really the beginning of everything, quoting, I spent every day since the day he came to my school at his house. He happened to have a studio that was perfect for what I was trying to do, so I ended up walking over to his house every single day to record and make music with him. Skipping school to record or make merch became the priority, so much so that he would often plan his day to ride the bus home just so his grandma would think he went. Nisus and Destroy released their first ever collab titled Bag Full of Boof in October of 2017. One day, they decided to take Adderall and stay up all night making music. By the end of that night, they had recorded a whole tape together and they later released it under Destroy Nisus. Overall, this was a huge step up from anything they had previously released. Remaining consistent throughout the following year was his only focus and he did just that. 
using better production and more ambient sounds that were in line with how he felt. While recording, he would often turn off every light in his room and shut all of his windows just so he could record in the dark. Although he was making progress as an individual, his music wasn't breaking through or catching any major attention. But in 2019, that would finally start to change. 2019 featured three different tapes, Dark Horse, Sometimes You Lose, and Forever I Love You. This is important because if you listen back, each one seemed to increase in quality than the one before it. But the real gem would be the single he released in July of that year called Bane. As we know, this would later end up becoming his breakout song, but that wouldn't actually happen right away. This didn't stop him and he was slowly building a small fan base in the underground. He put his head down and continued his spree of singles which would lead into 2020, his most consistent year overall. 2020 had four different tapes, Underworld, Lord, Broken Heart, and later Overseas. Although all of them were well put together, without a doubt his project Broken Hearts would be the one to stand out, and that's because it featured a song titled Oh Yeah. Two months after its release, Destroy Lonely would get a DM from Jay, an A&R and close friend to Playboy Cardi. After seeing the snippet of the song on Destroy's Instagram, he then wrote him saying, You hard. To which Destroy Lonely replied, Appreciate you gang. Not knowing what the outcome would be. Initially it was nothing, but a few weeks went by and he would receive another message. This time, Jay told him specifically that Playboy Cardi fucks with his music. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We went to the studio, went up. I was just, it was like, um, it was just real genuine energy. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I fuck with bro. This was right after the release of Cardi's Whole Lot of Red album and peak of his career. This would lead up to them actually linking up and destroy sitting in on a few studio sessions with Cardi to which they hit it off. Their friendship became natural and that would turn into Destroy officially signing to the Opium label shortly after. This was kept a secret for months though, but fans were speculating on the signing and got confirmation later that year. During this time of speculation, it only helped his career and that more people were tuning into his music and new fans were trying to figure out who he was. His song Bane from the year before started to trend on TikTok as a sound, and this would be the first time a lot of people would hear his name. It was the perfect storm. While this was happening, his songs were being leaked all over the internet to the point that his archive page on Spotify had more monthly listeners than his official page. This is something we've seen happen a lot within the Opium label with Ken Carson and of course Cardi as well. It was clear they had taken him under their wing and were getting ready to introduce him to the world. During this time, he took a step back from releasing back-to-back -back projects, with the exception of his EPXO, and he kept quiet while his fan base grew larger every single day. Near the end of 2021, Cardi announced the dates for his Narcissist tour, and Destroy Lonely was listed as an opener, a massive thing to be a part of, especially for the fact that it was going to be his first time on tour. Throughout the entire tour and going into 2022, his career would keep rising in the underground. He was seen in Playboy Cardi's music video for Sky, performed at the Lyrical Lemonade Summer Smash and did multiple collabs with his label mate Ken Carson. The anticipation for his first album under the label was building and he teased music for months. On its release in August of 2022, it didn't disappoint and it peaked in the top 100 which is good for an artist who's still breaking out. The most important part is the project had a variety of styles, which is always a promising sign. It shows that Destroy Lonely is an artist who's still adapting every day and is not afraid to experiment with other sounds. In a short period of time, he's gathered a cult like fan base, and like we've seen in the past, sometimes a smaller but more niche fan base can take you further in the long run. Of course, some of this is due to the diehard Cardi fans who are now following his music too, but it only makes sense as he's likely to become Cardi's prodigy. From making music in his room with the lights off, to opening the stage and signing a deal under one of his favorite artists, he's another example that anything is possible. But this is what he would want you to hear. Be yourself and goddamn, you know what I'm saying? Be yourself. <laughs> like, that's, this sounds corny until you actually realize how far that could take you. Like, with me, I stand on that. I never have not been myself. 